Hello everyone, Alvine here. Today we are doing the Trad Witch Tag. This was begun by Polish Folk Witch here on YouTube. And right before I started, I was like, I know this tag's a few months old. So I went back to have a look and it's five months old. <laughs> so there are a whole bunch of other people, a whole bunch of other fabulous witches who have done this tag. So if you like these questions and want to see other people's answers, just search this hashtag and you will find a plethora of videos to enjoy. If you would like to do this tag yourself, all of the questions as well as timestamps are down below. So feel free to answer those in a video response yourself. I would love to see that. Let me know if you have done it or if you do do it. And if you don't create content, please feel free to answer these questions down below in the comments so we can check that out and have a look because I always love hearing about how people practice, you know, like we all practice so differently. So it's really interesting to kind of get those sneak peeks into someone's personal craft. So without further ado, let's begin, shall we? Question number one is, what kind of craft do you practice? i.e. folk magic, traditional witchcraft, wicca, modern witchcraft, ceremonial magic, eclectic, occultism, etc. So my practice, once again, I have this phenomena where every time I come back to YouTube, I feel like I need to figure out what my practice is. Like I need to define it and like figure out what words fit with it and all that kind of stuff. Whereas normally when I'm doing my own thing, I'm just doing my own thing, right? And I don't know all the, the terms and the names and all the things, but I went through, I wrote a few notes and kind of thought about it and stuff. So my practice overall, I would say, is very eclectic. However, I am a bit of a chaos witch as well. And it was interesting going through this process and over the last few months, I've kind of realized that I put aside that word for myself because I was told by someone who I trusted and who I really looked up to that that wasn't what I was. I wasn't allowed to call myself that actually. And this is what it really is to be a chaos witch. And this is right when I was still like a little baby witch, right? So I really took that on and was just like, oh, okay, clearly I'm not that person. And you guys know, I do have an issue with what other people think. So I'm learning to stand in my own power <laughs> and to take up space and be like, no, and push back when stuff like that happens. But way back then I didn't and I never sort of thought about it again until the last few months I've been going through some different things, different resources and, and listening to other people speak about various things and whatever. And I've realized, no, like actually that is kind of the core of my practice. It is that kind of mixture between eclectic and chaotic and we'll get into a little bit of the chaos stuff in the next question. It is also very much folk, like it's very much folk magic. There are a few elements of ceremonial magic it is something that I'm interested in going deeper with and learning about and including in what I do, but predominantly it is folk magic. It is the stuff of the world, right? It's practical. It is the people's magic. That is kind of what I sort of practice. Question number two is what paradigm, faith or philosophy informs your craft, i.e. spirit model, animism, neoplatonianism, psychological approach, energy model, polytheism, etc. This question is just impossible for me to answer well. I hold so many thoughts simultaneously and this is the chaos magic stuff, right? So I actually believe different things. I believe contradicting things and I will step into the different beliefs that I kind of need, but the main paradigms, I guess, that I sort of inhabit in my practice are the spirit model. So I do very much have that kind of old belief of like, you know, God and heaven and the earth kind of being separate sort of thing. I do talk to and believe in God in the all. That is another thing too. So there's the all, which is a bit more pantheist, but in the spirit take two. This is a really difficult question for me to answer. So I did write a couple of little notes to refer to those as I speak because I'm just running off into the wilderness here. So I have several different paradigms that I kind of operate within in my practice and my spiritual and my magical practice. The predominant one is the spirit model. So I do very much believe that like spirits are around us, God, angels, demons, the fae, saints, various, various spirits. I very much tap into that paradigm. I really like that paradigm. It feels very comfortable to me. I grew up in a Christian household. So that kind of idea of spirit being around in whatever capacity is one that I really like and I really take a lot of comfort from. So that is definitely number one, aside from the kind of chaos approach, which is like whatever I need at the time 
time. And then there is the energy model. So I do very, very much see the world as made of energy and I tap into energy as and when I need to manipulate and all of that kind of thing and kind of shape and shift energy around in my space, in myself and in the sort of wider world. So that is definitely something. And animism definitely plays into that as well. So the belief that there is a spirit inhabiting every object, everything, every place. So that is something I definitely get down with as well. And then the psychological model. Like I do also believe that everything that we do magically is affecting us psychologically. And a lot of the work that we are doing, we focus on the external, but what's really happening is a shift on the internal so that we are kind of in alignment with what it is that we want and that can flow to us. So these are some of the main beliefs that I kind of hold and use in my practice. Question number three is what culture is your practice rooted in? There's a few different cultures that predominantly play into my practice. The first one is, of course, my own culture, okay? <laughs> the way that I grew up, Christianity too, I would say, is a culture that is very much played into how I do things because it, it formed everything that I understand about spirituality, you know, from when I was a small child up until the age of 20, three really and it still carries on it's not like i have decided not to kind of engage with christianity anymore and therefore i throw out the baby with the bathwater. i have everything from all of that experience beforehand that i've brought into my craft and that has very much shaped who i am as a person and also as a witch as well so there's my own culture in terms of like Australia, right? Melbourne and the places that I've grown up and then Christianity as well. Also, American culture has had a massive influence on my own. So various American folk practices. I'm really, really into folk magic. I absolutely love it. And I, in terms of the resources that I enjoy imbibing, at the moment, I prefer American resources over English resources, right? Over the UK and, and sort of that kind of area. A lot of things coming out of there. It's just where my interest is at this point. Although I enjoy both, of course. But I would say that American culture even in terms of what I'm taking in from like YouTube and all that kind of stuff has had a huge impact on me. Another one is YouTube itself. I do feel like that's its own separate culture and every few years there's a different culture on YouTube. So when I began, we'll, we'll talk about that soon too, but when I began about 10 10, 11 years ago is when I sort of started looking at YouTube and really like being in the space of YouTube. 11 years ago, really. The other one is African American culture, specifically hoodoo. That's had a really big part to play in my practice. It's something that I really, really love learning about. It's a kind of magic that really speaks to me. When I first started coming across resources that were talking about hoodoo, I was like, oh my God, like this is what I've been looking for. These are the resources that I've been hungering for for years. Years, you know so that was really exciting to like come across those and it's just something that I I love like I love it so much and there are so many good resources out there so many books and courses and teachers rooted in the hoodoo like culture and tradition and I just love imbibing and learning all of that wonderful stuff so that's definitely had a big impact on my practice and then of course finally the English and European witchcraft as well so I did mention that sort of before but that's also had a big part to play particularly in the beginning of my craft so I would say the first few years were defined by that kind of English European magic because those are the resources that I heard being talked about or had available to me. Question number four is how long have you been practicing and how did it all start? So I started learning and really like seeking magic in 2013. So it's been 10 years now, which is insane. <laughs> so much has happened. It feels like it's been a lot longer than 10 years and it feels like it, just so much has happened in that 10 years as well. It's like weird, right? <laughs> but it was in 2013, while I was studying arts therapy, that I first came across this idea of witchcraft, that it was actually a thing, that people actually practice this, right? So I was in my second year of my arts therapy course at the time. That course gave me the foundation to really explore my own spirituality and what I believed and create my own beautiful, wonderful thing. It was 
course therapy that gave me the foundation for that because throughout that course that was what we were learning is like going in and art making and expressing yourself and it's not about making the perfect picture it's about what it means you know and and bringing out all this stuff anyway it was like a whole like incredible so witchy really and that's what set me up for kind of looking more deeply into other forms of spirituality so as I mentioned I grew up as a Christian and it got to the point where it just it wasn't working for me anymore I suppose I was very depressed I was incredibly anxious uh, just life was not good in any way I hadn't felt connected in with that faith for quite a few years at that point when I was 23 I finally said all right I'm not going to church anymore and I hadn't gone to church even for a couple of years before that but it was it took me that long to finally say out loud to myself I am not going to church anymore. It was a really big deal to me. So that happened and then it was several months after that until I actually started looking into other spiritualities and like really being okay to be curious. And I knew right from the beginning that I didn't want to step into anyone else's faith. I wanted to really explore for myself and come from a heart-centered space with it rather than stepping in and under someone else's rules. So I started looking around on YouTube and I was questioning first all these different things like what do I believe? Like what's the core of my belief? What's truth? You know, everyone's got their own version of truth. Like who's correct? I just don't know. And, and looking at all this stuff and it was just like, oh, so overwhelming. So in the end I was like, okay, like I've got to sit down and figure out like what do I believe? And all I could come to was I believe that something about the earth is sacred, right? That's all I got. So I sort of started searching around and on YouTube there were these old documentaries of Neolithic people and all this kind of stuff. So I went back as far as I could possibly go. I was like, what was the first religion? Like, take me all the way back, right? And so I was looking at all these pagan, I guess we would call them people, communing with the earth and all of this. And this is like around like Stonehenge and, you know, all these different kind of ancient structures and, and all these different things, right? And then I came across modern paganism through that and then I saw through that that there were people who actually practiced witchcraft and I was like whoa I was like we can do this this is awesome because it was something that I had come across when I was much younger and I have told that story before and I won't in this one because it's just gonna take too long but I came across that and I was like you know what this is something I really want to explore so I did start to explore I found people on YouTube at this point I was watching a lot of more documentary type content rather than actual people speaking but I did eventually come across Kellyanne Maddox and Anya Orga and both of them because they were pantheists which was kind of where I sort of came in from exploring the pantheism idea which is to say that all is God everything is holy and they were both really into tarot as well and they were kind of my introduction into tarot so those were the first two youtubers that I just adored and fell in love with and you know kind of helped guide me on my path and the first book that I ever read was Wicca by Scott Cunningham but as soon as I picked up this book and started reading it I knew it wasn't for me I was like no no this is not what I'm after like this is a set religion and I really don't want to step into that like I don't want to be doing things because someone else told me that I should be doing them I want to I want to act out of why like I want to know why I'm doing something do you know what I mean like I want it to come from that space first which is why as soon as I saw Wicker I was just like no and I was like maybe this isn't for me you know because I didn't really know what else was out there but I was like no there is something here that I'm really intrigued by so I didn't really practice any of the things that I was sort of told that I should but I did keep searching I decided you know what I'm gonna do a year and a day because I'd heard about this right I was like I'm gonna just learn and just be on the peripheral kind of outside for a year and a day so I can learn about this and figure out what this is and find out if it's something that I really want to do. So I started doing that but I will say after nine months I was like no nah, I'm all in. I'm in. I'm gonna jump in. I'm gonna dive in. I'm gonna do this. <laughs> and what I did to actually um, assage, is that the word, assage my like Christian guilt was I actually just prayed about it and I just spoke to God and I said look God I'm on this journey I've found this thing this witchcraft and it's something that just 
makes me feel so excited and sings to my soul and I have heard all my life that this is evil and this is bad so God if it is please bring me back guide me to where I am supposed to be but I really feel like this is a good positive thing for me so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to try this and I'm going to trust that you are going to bring me back wherever it is that I need to be for my highest good. I don't think I use the word highest good because I wouldn't have known that at the time. But that's what I said. And so when I stepped into all of this, I didn't have that guilt plaguing me because I truly trust and believe that, you know, I handed it over, you know, and was like, you know, and I know a lot of Christians will be like, Bleh! like lose their shit over that. But <laughs> that is perhaps a tip for any of you who are newer or who are still feeling some kind of way. You know, if you feel comfortable, it is an approach that you can take. You can pray about it. You can give it to God, <laughs> you know. Say the truth. Like, just speak from your heart. Like, yo, this is why I'm doing this. This is how I feel. And kind of put it on God a little bit where it's like, lead me to where I need to be. So that is how I first came to the craft 10 years ago, which is crazy. I can't believe it's been that long. But I actually, like, dedicated when I was like, yes, you know what? I'm all in. I'm doing this. It was the night before Yule. How magical is that? I was like, Christmas fucking night, except not Christmas because Yule here in Australia is in the middle of the year, not the end of the year, so in June. But anyway, so it is coming up to my ninth anniversary as a witch, but like it's 10 years since I was like learning about witchcraft, do you know what I mean? Question number five is what books or resources did you first start with? Would you recommend them to others today? So let's talk books, my favourite subject. You know it, you know it. So I've got a couple of books here to show you and um, let's just chat about them, shall we? So the very first book that I read was this one, Standing in the Light by Shaman Apt Russell. <laughs> so this is not a witchy book, this is one that's on pantheism. So it, the, the tagline here is My Life as a Pantheist. And this was the very first magical book that I read. And I believe it was Kellyanne that suggested this, although it might have been Anya. I know it was definitely one of the two. I've got a whole bunch of, I don't know if you can see, there's a whole bunch of tabs in there. I just realized this camera doesn't focus. No, it stays in the one focus point. Drives me crazy. So never mind, but there are, trust me, a bunch of <laughs> a bunch of little spots in here that I've marked. I haven't actually looked through this book in many, many years. So it is definitely one that I loved at the time. So if you're into pantheism, if you are interested in kind of learning a bit more about it or just hearing someone's experience from my memory, like I said, it's been a long time since I read this book. That's what it's really about. It's just a personal story about pantheism and it was really beautiful. I really, really enjoyed it. So I would recommend it if you're into pantheism or curious about it. The next one that I read very early in my craft is Hedge Witch by Ray Beth. So this is a series of letters between Ray and her students. So she's got two students at the start and then later on she just has the one student. And so it's just bits and pieces. It's not like a structured learning kind of thing, but it's bits and pieces about the craft and this person's ideas, Ray Beth's ideas about the craft and that kind of thing. It is very kind of Wiccan, that kind of era it was written, let me tell you. I feel like it tells you all you need to know when you know when something was written. 1990, okay, so that's the kind of brand of witchcraft that it is. I wouldn't necessarily recommend it. I I liked it. I actually, there's, I've got heaps of, I don't know if you're going to be able to see, but I've got heaps of like little notes in here and highlights and all kinds of things. Because like I said, it was one of my very first books. So I just like drank it all in, you know, and really enjoyed it. But it's not something that I found particularly practically useful. It was just very interesting from, again, from memory, because it's been a long time since I picked this one up. So Yes and no in terms of, I don't know. I don't know if I'd recommend it. I mean, honestly, what I feel is that if you are new, and even if you're not new, get your hands on whatever you can get your hands on. If you've got stuff at the library that's like witchy-ish, read it, see what's in there, take what it is that you want from there, you know? I do understand that books are expensive and you, like people can't just buy whatever it is and all the things, but if something piques your interest, go that direction. Like, I don't feel like there's anything we should be staying away from or anything like that, you know? It's just about what works for you at the end of the day too, because what is a bad book for someone will be in a fantastic book for someone else, you know? So 
there's a bit of that. What I will also say is all of the books and various things that I mention here that can be seen on Amazon, I will leave links for down below. I always do that. They are affiliate links, but I don't expect you to buy anything or anything like that. If someone does, which is very rare, it's a lovely little bonus. I get like 10 cents or something, you know, but I just put them there for ease. So you can just go straight down and click on the book that you want to see and if you want to go and purchase it, you can do it elsewhere or whatever, but you can just like see what it is and it's right there for you. The next one is Animal Speak. So this is by Ted Andrews. I didn't realize up until a few years ago how prolific of a writer Ted Andrews is. He's got some fantastic books. And actually one of my most favorite books, Psychometry by him. I really, really enjoyed it, but we're not talking about that today. So this is probably the first book that I really loved, that like really fed into my practice in a really big way. And it's one that I love. It's been beaten up. It's just fabulous. So it's not extensive. Like there is a lot of animals not included in here. I know there is another book by him which is similar and I believe it's like a later version. So I think there might actually be more animals, more information in that other book, but I don't know 100%. So let us know down below. I know some of you will know. Let us know down below if like what's up with that and we can point people in a good direction, in the right direction. But basically it goes through, it's got birds first and then it's got land creatures and then it's got a few reptiles and arachnids and things in the back insects and stuff um, but it goes through and it tells you what the kind of main power of the creature is when their cycle of power is so like are they an autumnal animal is it year round this kind of stuff and then it tells you about the animal and different it's so good like I've never seen a resource as good as this and usually the stuff that you find online often is actually from this book <laughs> so there are things that I've seen and like people just copy out of here you know so he talks about the various symbolism of the animal and what they're connected with energetically and all that kind of stuff how you can work with them and the sorts of things that if you see these creatures or if these creatures really come into your life to be worked with the sort of things that they may be trying to teach you so I really love this one it's one that that I'll probably have for the rest of my life. And I definitely do recommend this if you are interested at all in connecting with animals in a magical way. And the last book is that I'm gonna mention today is Craft of the Wild Witch by Poppy Palin. So this book I read very early on in my practice as well. And it was one that I found quite difficult to get through. But the reason that I'm sharing it today is because for what it is, it's fabulous. So it's not my kind of craft. It's very wordy. Like she's got a lot of, I remember sharing like a lot of chants and things like that and meditations and stuff, which I'm not super big into like reading about. This is, I'm just talking in terms of when I was new and as a reader and that kind of thing. But there's so much good information in here. And I've learned more about Poppy over the last sort of year or so but she took her life a little while ago and it was a very sad um really sad tale um she's actually had chronic pain and she had lost loved ones and it was just a whole horrible thing her channel is actually still up where she says goodbye they're very difficult videos to listen to because she's just such a sweet beautiful soul and you just like she's in pain you know and and she did end up taking her life so it's it's hard to listen to but she is someone who was so just a beautiful pagan soul. I think, I mean, that is the way to describe her. She was a beautiful pagan soul and loved animals and she was just gorgeous. So anyway, um, this is a really beautiful book. And, I, and again, the reason I'm mentioning this is because I've heard a lot of other people say that they love this book. So this is, again, very English, um, kind of European kind of slant to it. Um, she was English. I believe she's English. She's only from the UK, I apologise if she's not from England. But this is one that I read in the beginning and I do certainly have highlights through here. I know it taught me a lot. I just remember it being a little bit of a slog because you can kind of see very like word heavy or whatever. But that was one that I enjoy. Do I recommend it? Maybe. <laughs> I'm sorry, I know. I should have read through the book again and, and got proper notes and all that kind of stuff, but I'll just let you know that that was one of the first ones as well. And it is a good read. A lot of people like it. Wasn't my favourite thing. Pick it up if you would like to.